guys welcome out of the garden and into my home in today's video i have so many things that i need to knock off of a long list that has been just waiting and waiting around for the items on there to get scratched off so we're going to be potting up some evergreens and containers we're going to make a quick run to the garden center if we can find the evergreens that we need we are also going to cancel some roses yes that's right we're going to be canceling some roses we're going to snatch them on out of the garden with no questions asked and i'll get to that in a little bit we're also going to do a beautiful floor arrangement i'm going to show you guys how i do my floor arrangements because i like to have flowers in my home all seasons of the year so in the summertime the springtime mother's day of course and even during the holidays, I like to start the holidays off with a beautiful, luxurious floor arrangement. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Now, I'm going to show you guys how you can take about $30 and have a beautiful floor arrangement. But then if you want to take it up and double that budget and go to $60 or even $70, I'm going to show you some items that you can incorporate. And all of your guests will think that you have a $100 or $150 floor arrangement. And the only thing you did was use a couple of tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Now... Keep in mind that when I'm building the $30 floral arrangement, before we get to the luxurious floral arrangement, I'm going to have to leave a little bit of space open in order to take my floral arrangement to the next level. But that's nothing. We'll get to that in that section of the video. And we're going to make a run to the florist as well. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and start boxing up for our recent giveaway on Garden Queen. I wanna thank everybody who participated in our last giveaway, you guys. I was so excited, and you wanna know what? The thing that I like the most is the odds. The odds were just almost anybody could win because most people, when you have a giveaway, they don't necessarily think that they're gonna win, so therefore, they don't enter. But if you didn't win this giveaway, don't worry, because guess what? We have a giveaway that we're going to be doing this week over on my Instagram at the underscore garden queen. Now, enough of me talking, honey. Let's go ahead and let's box these beautiful Deer Park Ironworks, the River North Collection, obelisk up and send them to our lucky winner. Congratulations, and it warms my heart to be able to give you a gift for you to add to your beautiful garden. So... Put them in a container and watch what they do. Put them in the ground by themselves to just accent the area and they're still going to be beautiful. Now, again, as I just said, I'm going to be doing another giveaway over on Instagram. So make sure you guys are following me. I'll go ahead and I will put my Instagram right here, the underscore garden queen, so you guys can go ahead and check it out. So... Let's go ahead, let's get these boxed up. The box is taller than me. <laughs> let's go ahead and get these loaded up in the truck and then we'll resume our vlog tomorrow. You guys, I'm so excited. Look what was here when I got back. The box is a little bit tattered, but hopefully everything is in shape. But you guys, I'm uber excited. Y'all know how I feel about Deer Park Ironworks, baby. Quality, quality, quality. Come on in, get comfortable, because right now I'm working on an area in my garden. It's going to be very simple, but it's going to be elegant. Now, recently we just moved out some terracotta pots. It was a total of six of them. I'm doing a little bit of behind the scenes planning, and we're going to go get the plants today. I'm getting ready to show you guys how I source my plants 
how I look and see what inventory is so that way I'm not running from garden center to garden center and just to kind of show you how I walk things through when I'm looking at adding plants to a certain area in my garden first let me show you guys the area that I'm looking at uh, redoing let me run my ideals through with you guys and then we'll come back and then we'll see if they have the necessary supplies that we need so let's go ahead and do that now this area over here what I want to do is I want to go in clean out all of these containers these are the remnants of my summer pots and the reason why I did not cut these down is because I'm going to pull out these annual savvias here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overwinter these. So I have a total of four plants that I can use for my next season's arsenal. So that's why I didn't go in immediately and just dig all of these out. And the purple fountain grass, I kind of just left them for a little bit of interest in this area. Let's go ahead. Let's clean these pots out real quick. my four plants right there so I'll go ahead and I'll repot these out or either replant those into the landscape and just mulch them up real good only one place that I know I can go and I can get the same number of evergreens because I want these evergreens to be a great size. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop on the website for Sherwood's Forest. We're going to see if they have the number of evergreens that we need. Once we see that, we'll run over and pick those up if they have them. If not, then we'll go ahead and we'll take this area in a different direction here. So now that I've showed you guys the area that we have, um, let's go ahead, let's hop online and see if they have what we're looking for in stock. Now, oftentimes when I'm looking to do an area versus just getting in the car and just going from nursery to nursery, what I like to do is I like to go on the website and see if they have what I'm looking for available. So let's go ahead and check that out now. And it won't take us long. I like the way that they have their website designed out because they have it designed out by plants, trees, shrubs, seasonal items. If you're looking for fall bulbs, um, the fall bulbs will be there. But let's go ahead and check out and see what's going on. We're going to ride over there pick our specimens up we'll come back and we'll have the area ready where we can just go ahead and just plop the taylor junipers in Everything is lined up, so now we're going to get them out, and then we'll go over all of the specs and everything here. So, we have four of these Taylor Junipers right here. Let's go ahead and get these girls popped in the containers that they're going to be in. I knew if there was one place that I was actually going to be able to go and find the same exact plant, the same exact height, this size in a large quantity it was only a few places that i was going to be able to go because this is where i got my other two taylor junipers have in containers that were planted up in early spring got those from sherwood forest we got these in we'll go ahead and we'll put them in the containers real quick
love it. I love it. I love it. I love the way that everything looks. It's exactly how I imagined it. One of the things I will be doing with these terracotta pots is because terracotta, it cracks, it expands, and it contracts, I do have some things that I'll be doing to protect my Monrovia Taylor junipers throughout the winter season. I have everything planted up. I'm loving the way this area looks. It added an immediate ambiance to the area. I'm really loving the way that this area has is starting to take shape. It's starting to come into its own. You guys, let me know what you think about these Monrovia Taylor Junipers in terracotta pots. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to be canceling some roses. Yes, I'm going to be pulling them out of my garden simply because of Rose Rosette or Witch's Broom. The total of four. I actually see the Witch's Broom and this is why they call it that because it's distorted. So if you see these on your roses, you want to pull these out immediately. See where you have the distorted leaves is excessively thorny and those are the characteristics and signs that you guys want to watch out for When you have a rose, and you have a rose that's been growing in that space, you shouldn't come in and plant another rose in the same exact space as you previously had a rose, right? It's when you have a rose that has rose rosette, at the bare minimum, you wanna give that space four months before you go in and you plant up a rose again. I like to wait six months. So, guys, it is what it is. It's just a part of the game with gardening. So, let's go ahead and get this baby down, and then I'll tell you guys the skinny on where this rose rosette came from. You guys, this area looks so different without the arbor way. I'm going to have to get used to looking at this like this. I don't know, I might come back in with something different, but for right now, it's a no-go for me. Like, I am not liking just this space. But then on the other hand, I do kind of like it because it, it, it does open this area up a little bit. But I will definitely come up with something or come back in with a different obelisk or plant a annual type vine there and maybe just give it, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in this area, but it definitely looks different, you guys. Rose Rosette came from my neighbor. He had a knockout rose that had Rose Rosette. Now, a lot of people say that knockout roses are more susceptible to Rose Rosette, and I just kind of feel like that's because whenever you go somewhere, you are guaranteed to see a knockout rose. Knockout roses are one of the most sold roses. They're sold in big box stores and we have a plenty of them. They're sold in nurseries. I mean, Walmart sells knockout roses. Meyer sell knockout roses. Menard sell, I mean, we could just keep going down the list with who all sell knockout roses. My neighbor had a, a rose bush that was right by mine. We took those three roses out first and you guys, we put them in trash bags on the day that our trash ran so we didn't put them in a the trash can and bring our trash can back around the other roses in the garden we actually went inside of the house we didn't come here we poured our clothes off i bleached everything down with bleach so here we are the summertime we're having a beautiful display on the eden roses here the two roses that we had in the containers in the early spring they definitely performed no sign of rose rosette so then i mentioned it again like hey can you pull out those roses still no action from my neighbor 
So then when I came back outside and I seen that my roses, my Eden roses had rose rosette, you guys, I was like, that I have roses in the back that now have rose rosette. And I'm going to have to pull up several roses because you will not pull out your bush. And you guys, I kid you not, that next day he got outside, he cut all, he cut that rose down. I don't know if he dug up the root ball, but right now there's no foliage. I don't know if he dug it back to the root, if the root ball is up because it's on his property. So I can't really, you know, I can walk by and kind of see like that. His, the stump is still there, but I don't know if he, you know, cut everything out. I'm not sure. But until we either buy another house or that stump is gone, I will not be placing another rose in my garden. Now, I can say that my at last roses are showing no sign. It's a far enough distance. Now, if I start to see that my roses are showing some sign of rose rosette baby i'm gonna pull all of them too i have three questions for you guys the first question have you ever had to deal with rose rosette in your garden two how did you deal with the rose rosette and three if you've never had to deal with rose rosette what would you do would you pull the roses out would you try to cut it back would you try to find some alternative let me know down in the comment box and i definitely want to know what y'all feel about me having to pull out these roses and this arbor baby because honey i am heartbroken right now because that was a good look in the summertime prepping you know just for the holiday season so I like to take things room at a time so I'll show you the first room that we're gonna start prepping for that area prepped up first so we're gonna be you know just changing things around a little bit but then also we're gonna be doing a floral arrangement and we're gonna make sure that this floral arrangement is gonna be under $30 and you guys, I am so excited about it. And it's definitely going to bring all the jazz. But I still want to make the floor arrangement to where it can be affordable. And let's just go ahead and say under $30. So I'll show you a couple of options that you can do. And then we're going to take it to the next step and take it over the top. Where if you want to double that budget and take it up to about $60 or $70, you can just go all in. So, for the container, I wanted to bring kind of like that vintage feel, those French vibes, those romantic vibes in, but I definitely want it to be something that's calm and it's going to go with the decor in this room and not compete. I want it to be the center stage, but... I wanted to, you know, blend in well with everything else because the day after Thanksgiving, honey, we're going to go in and we're going to put the Christmas tree up. And so the Christmas tree is then going to take center stage. So let's go ahead. Let's hop in and let's look at our options because it's two vases or two vases that I think I might end up going with for this arrangement. Let me show you guys what's on my mind. As you guys know, I have a lot of containers, a lot of vases. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I love to container garden, but also I love to keep flowers in my home year round, you guys. So in order to do such, to me, I mean, I just, hey, I have a collection now. So the first one that I'm thinking to give us the vintage kind of feel is going to be this container right here now isn't she a doll like this container i like it because of the texture so here's our first option that we're going to go with let me set this back down so i can get the other one and here is our second option so we have option one and option two let me show you guys the room i do see i'm gonna have to repair this one but that's a quick easy fix so let's hop inside so i can show you guys 
the room that we're going to be decorating and this is where the floor arrangement is going to go as well here that we're going to be redoing so not nothing too over the top but we're just going to go in and just give this room a quick refresh so what i want to do before we get knee deep into pulling everything i want to go ahead and go pick up the flowers do that first I just made it home with the most gorgeous selection of flowers. I can't wait for you guys to see what all I picked out. They're so gorgeous and beautiful. So let's go inside and put these girls into a beautiful arrangement. Let's grab some buckets because we have to get these girls into water real quick. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna start prepping these flowers here now we're going to go in and we're just going to start just making simple cuts and what i like to do is i will go ahead and i'll get the food out but i'm going to leave it inside of the package okay that the flowers are drinking this water we're going to let them continue to uptake the water for a little while so that way they can take a nice long drink I am going to keep the existing throw for right now. What I'm going to do is I am going to come in and just start to arrange my pillows. Now let's go ahead, let's start with the arrangement. And as you guys can see, these roses have really opened up and I hope, there we go. Now you guys can see a true depiction of what they look like. Get them out of this flower wrap. Now, first thing I do is I go in and I take these ugly branches off see the bottom ones because you're not going to be able to see those and we just want a single rose see this is what we want we want these long stems we don't really want the foliage and sometimes I will leave a few with just some foliage on it but for the most part I only want the stems see the price so just 15 bucks for a dozen roses so you see how tight this rose is it'll fully open up like these roses over here in a couple of days we have this vase right here and we also have this vase now because I have quite a bit of flowers what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to go with this bigger vessel right here and while this is cute and adorable, I'm not going to use it in this one. Now, I have my roll of chicken wire and I'm just going to cut it out and then I'm going to make it a frog. Now, if you were using a floral frog, then you actually could get away with doing this with less flowers. So to save you money that way as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just mesh these so they can fit inside of my vase here. Cold water, floral food inside. Mm -hmm. 
start with are my greens. We have our carnations here. Now what you want to do, you can open your carnations up by just slightly just going in and just brushing the top of it. Here we are in our arrangement, so I'm going to break down the cost analysis. So we have a dozen roses and the dozen roses was $15. We have our greens that was $8. I think it was like $6.99, $7.99, or $8. So let's just go ahead and go with eight. So that's 15 plus eight, that's 23. Baby's breath, that was $5. Then they had the carnations were $5. To keep it exactly at $30, they had carnations the same color, but they were a little bit smaller. Those were $3. So you still will be able to bring that color in. Now, if I had to choose between the baby's breath or the carnation, I would go with the baby's breath because it takes up so much space. And then we would just complete this by putting one rose in the top. And we would take off our guard petals here. And when you take the guard petals off, it completely just makes the rose look just so much better so fresh and right there in the top so we're done we're going to take this over the top so let me turn it around and show you guys what everything looks like so i like my arrangements to be really full I'm gonna go in and i'm just gonna add to i get it to the way i like it to be you want to make sure that when you put your hand in you're not touching two flowers. So, oh, here, let's take these off. And so that's what I mean by the guard petals. Take those off and it immediately just freshens your rows. Or you can take it and you can fold it down. Like that. Or you really want to use a pencil because it just folds right over the pencil. So just like that. 